Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. All right, today's episode is a special request video and it is talking about medical coders accuracy, okay? And it always seems like the coder's job is always threatened. Um, and it's in it, it seems like it's an intense uh, profession to be in because of it. Okay. And I'd like to thank Lamont. Thank you so much for the idea. <laughs> All right. So accuracy and audits. And um, that is a scary part of being a medical coder, right? Because we have to have our work looked at every month and we have to achieve a certain amount of accuracy every month. Okay. Or at least that's the goal of every month is to achieve a certain level of accuracy. Okay. I've seen facilities range from 90% all the way to 97%. I am in the facility that is at 97%, okay? Now, before you think, gosh, isn't that hard? <laughs> yes, it is very hard, right? It's, it's hard being a medical coder, period, right? Because we have to know a bunch of stuff. We basically have to know all of these things that doctors know while never having had to have gone to medical school. We have to know at least the stuff on, on paper, right? And we have to understand disease processes and we have to understand terminology and we have to understand basically what their thought process is when they're trying to select a level or trying to, to um, select procedures and things like that. And it's all based on the documentation. <laughs> so with this in mind, I'm, I'm gonna preface the rest of this video with this. When it comes to accuracy, you have to, and I know it's really hard because trust me, I struggle with it too. You have to keep that anxiety about it in check, okay? Because if you start to panic about not being able to meet accuracy and, and you, you know, you just feel like you're not, you don't, you're not feeling confident and, and you think that you're going to fail and then they're going to fire you and then you're going to lose your job and you, you have to keep that at bay, okay? And I know it's hard because trust me. There are some times when I'm looking at my audits and I'm thinking, are you freaking for real? You know, like, did I seriously miss that? Did I, did I not see that? What was wrong with me that day? You know, there, there's just a bunch of things that happen every single month. Not all of us can always be on point, on target all the time. Okay. So we're human and you have to think of it as, this is why I always tell everybody to make sure that you are just studying as hard as you can, make sure that you are trying to do all of the do all of the extra things so that understanding it becomes easier for you. And you don't have to worry about second guessing yourself. Because when you second guess yourself, that can impact your productivity. Okay. Now I'm not even gonna talk about productivity right now. <laughs> We're just talking about accuracy, okay? Now, because everybody is different with the level of percentage of accuracy, right? I'm just going to use the example, all right? If, for example, you don't make accuracy and it is one month, okay? So you're plugging along and... We're looking at a six month time span, right? And the first month you do great. Okay. You're 98%. You're passing and you're, you're feeling really confident. Okay. The second month you do even better and you get a hundred percent. That means everything that they, they pulled for you, all the records that you pulled and, and the amount of records that they pull can vary. Some, some facilities will pull a certain like amount, like 25 some will pull 50, depending on, on what you're doing, okay? Um, but we're just going to go with that, okay? 25. They pull those 25, they check the 25, and you are good to go. You are shining, okay? You're at 100%. So you started at 98, you got it to 100%. Now this third month, you hit 85% because you hit a brick wall. Something happened with the provider. They changed the way they were documenting, Um and of course, now you're having to slow down and you're looking at this documentation a little bit more, but then you're trying to hurry up because then you're falling behind. So you missed something. And now all of a sudden your accuracy is at 85%. Okay. 
No, don't panic. Okay. It's just one month. All right. You get back in the saddle the next month. Right. And you're back at 97%. And you're like, I passed that one. That, that one was good. Okay. And then you keep going along next month. Bam. 90%. And you're thinking, oh, shoot. Am I going to lose my job? No. No. Because that's not normal for you. Your normal pattern is to be at the accuracy level, okay? If you start to dip low, let's just say all of a sudden you start trending downward and your boss is like, okay, what the heck? This is not normal for you. What's going on? At least that's the way it is at my facility. If our supervisor starts to notice that we're dipping low, lower and lower, she will ask us what's going on because... Three months of that in a row, then you can see that there's a pattern. Either something's going on with the coder, or maybe the coder is not grasping something, or whatever the case may be, okay? Maybe it's a personality conflict going on between um, the, the coder and the provider and the supervisor. I mean, it could be anything, okay? Um, and that affects a lot of that too. But don't get worried if you have one month, it's just a bad month. Don't don't even get worried if you have two months in a row that are bad, okay? As long as you're showing that you're being consistent with your accuracy, you're not just missing error, missing, um, missing diagnosis or selecting wrong procedures and things like that, that you're actually making an effort to better understand what you're doing, okay? Because if you start looking at and, and building that anxiety of, I got to hit 97% or I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to get fired. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to lose everything. Don't, don't start thinking like that because it is a slippery slope and trust me, it can mess with your head. Like I said, medical coding can mess with your head. It can mess with your self-esteem, but you have to learn how to keep it in check. Okay. This is why I stress learning and studying so that you can be confident in what you're doing, okay? The accuracy will be there. And there will be some months where you won't hit it. And then there will be months where you go and you're perfect. I mean, you're 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. So being off by one month um, is not going to hurt you, okay? Audits are meant to catch errors, yes, but they all are also a learning tool, okay? This is where you can learn and find out if something is not making sense to you or if you're not grasping something quite right. Um, this is when it'll, it'll help you to be like, oh, okay, well, now I know I need to really concentrate on this because a good auditor, now I stress this because sometimes I've heard horror stories and I have been, <laughs> I have had a couple of bad auditors myself, okay? Uh, and it's it's nature of the beast. It just happens. Like I said, the caliber of every single coder is different. And sometimes with the auditors, it, it can be just that they have to audit all the time and they have people yelling at them saying that know that they are correct and and they, you know, you know, why are they marking them wrong? And, you know, it could be burnout <laughs> with some of these auditors. Um but this is why always having a well-formulated argument will help you. And don't be, um, don't, don't fall into that trap of being like, um, where, where they say, well, no, uh, I'm the auditor and I mark this as incorrect is incorrect. You have to have your equal say too. You have to be able to explain why you selected a certain procedure or ex explain why you selected a certain code. Now, if you can give a good, solid argument, right, with your auditor, then your auditor may overturn that error and then you can, your accuracy will go up because just because they mark it wrong does not necessarily mean that it's wrong, okay? This is why I say know where to find your resources. You will have accuracy as long as, or you'll be able to meet accuracy as long as you are following the rules of coding and as long as you are following those guidelines and you stick with them there are going to be times when yes you do miss something because it's just a human error you know uh, but talking with your providers and making sure that they're documenting 
in a clear and concise manner will help you with your production. It will also help you with accuracy because there's not any of this ambivalence, okay? When I first started back in the orthopedic clinic, they were using the word consistent with a lot, okay? They would say uh, knee pain consistent with osteoarthritis. Well, we know in the outpatient setting, anytime you say consistent with, that's a bad word because it's ambiguous. We, we can only pick up what is definitive, okay? The minute that provider breathes that word, consistent with, probable, suspected, likely, maybe, could be, maybe it is, <laughs> we can't pick it up. We have to go with what's definitive. We have to go with what is absolutely there. So this caused a lot of back and forth all the time between the provider and us as the coders, plus the coders and the supervisor going back and forth at it. Like the supervisor saying, why aren't you educating your provider about not using that verbiage? Because while it may be that, while it could be like consistent with this, do they know that when they use words like that, that you're not able to pick up this definitive diagnosis, that you're only able to pick up the, um, the symptoms. And so then it was just a lot of back and forth, back and forth. So this is why I stress making sure that the documentation is clear and concise. As long as the provider has been educated on that and you have your proof, everything is about proving what you did, okay? If you can prove that you've educated these providers and they continue to do something and you're coding what is there because you've done your queries and you've you've educated them, you've counseled them, and they're still not wanting to to um to work with you, right? Then you have all you need for any any sort of audit with your supervisor or with the data quality people. Okay. Everything is about backing it up. Okay. Gotta back up everything. And like I said, you can't let that fear of, well, maybe I'm doing this wrong and I'm second guessing myself. You have to have that confidence and you have to be able to work on your level of confidence um, when it comes to how you code. Go with what your first instinct says. Because a lot of times when coders are going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, they're having that internal struggle and they're thinking, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? Chances are you are doing it right um, because if you're looking at it carefully and you're reading everything like you're supposed to, then you're all right. It's when you start second guessing yourself and start trying to, to think of all these other things that are probably not right is when you start to mess yourself up. And then again, being worried about your job and things like that. They're not going to just fire you. Okay. And anybody, any, any facility that does, I mean, do you really want to work in a facility like that? Because a facility or, or an office or whatever will give you time to, to get right. They're not just going to fire you. I mean, or at least I hope that they wouldn't just fire a coder for that. I have personally never seen it. I know there are some places um, that are very strict and I'm not really sure what's going on at those places. Uh, but whenever you do get audited and something comes up wrong, talk to the auditor. And that's another thing too. If they know that you're not making these careless errors, that you are actually learning and you're working hard to learn more, but you just made a mistake, that's going to also inf impact that auditor's thought process of this coder is trying hard, okay? We need to give them a little bit of time, okay? Uh, we'll see how they do the next month. And if you're showing that you're trending upwards next month, then everybody's going to know that you just had an off month, okay? Um, so don't let people scare you to thinking that you're always going to be threatened all the time with your, with your job and things like that. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It, I mean, it can happen. Um, it did happen with me. 
uh, <laughs> I haven't really mentioned the supervisor too much, uh, but I did mention her a few videos ago. I had a supervisor before my supervisor now, and we had a, a personality conflict. I didn't think that I, we had a personality conflict. Uh, it was it was on her end. <laughs> I was the last to know, though. <laughs> and, um, you know, she did always try to challenge me with when it came to audits because I um, I had to train her. I mean, I literally had to train her because she had just got put into that position as a supervisor. And she had not coded for inpatient professional services before ever. And she she knew that I did. And I was new to her. She was new to being a supervisor, period. And she said, hey, Blue, can you help me? Because I don't understand this uh, inpatient professional services. Um, I got all the, the trash clinics that no one wanted. That's what she said. I got all the trash clinics that no one wanted. And I said, okay, stop calling my clinic trash. And she goes, oh, well, I'm sorry. Um, I just, I don't understand how to code this. I said, but it doesn't mean that it's trash, you know. I said, don't worry. I'm here. You know, I'll help you to to understand this. It's no big deal. This was me nine, eight, nine years ago. <laughs> Saying this. Don't worry, I'll help you. Nine years ago. Okay. Hadn't had my credential too long. But yeah, I'll help you. Anyway, so I helped her. I helped her to understand. I broke it down to her. And she goes, oh, I get it now. So this was after about a week. I had I had worked with her. And she was doing the audits and, and pulling the audits. And everything was great, you know. Um, and then something happened. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to go into detail on that one. But um, she, needless to say, it was... It, I met some of her family. And I don't know what happened from the time she was like, hey, this is my family. This is, you know, everybody. To the next day of now, <laughs> I'm going to try to find something wrong with your with your coding. So uh, we had to bring in a um, the, the third party neutral, okay? If you can't agree with your auditor, usually they bring in a third party neutral. And in our case, it was the chief. So we we were both there and we presented the evidence. And we said, this is a scenario. Which scenario is correct? Well, she didn't know who, who, had, who was trying to um, argue for what. All she knew was this was a final answer that was um, decided on. She didn't know if it was by the auditor or the coder. So she's like, well, which one is correct? And, and of course, she agreed with me because I had everything there. One second. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. All right. So I had all of my arguments and I had all of my evidence there. And I was able to prove my point. So um, she, of course, didn't wasn't real happy about this because she's a supervisor. You know, she should know more. And... And that was her argument too. She's like, I should know more than this. And I said, like, well, I mean, it's not like you just, you've been doing this forever. This is your first time with this clinic as well. I've just had more time with it. And um, again, she didn't, she didn't really care for that, even though I'm trying to be as straightforward as possible. But what helped me and what saved me at that time was being able to prove my argument, being able to prove the, the reason that I selected the code. So... This went on for months <laughs> until I finally was able to get away from her team and, and I got with my supervisor now. Um, but that took time, you know, and it, it was, and I think during that time, uh, I learned a lot about um, really standing up for myself and really wishing that I had a better relationship with a better auditor uh, because you're supposed to learn from your auditor. It's not supposed to be um, where they don't really know about that clinic. Hopefully, your auditors have had lots of experience, and hopefully, your auditors are able to explain why. If you have problems that um, you're not meeting accuracy, or you, you got an error, and the auditor says that this is incorrect, 
ask them why. And if you don't feel like they'll explain it to you, just ask them uh, what was the reference they used because they should give you a reference as to why. Um, because this is your job that's on the line, okay? So they have to be as accountable for what they mark as incorrect too. So that is something that you should consider to and should think about that you if you if you are following the rules if you are doing things right and correct you will be okay if you are showing that you are consistently always going above and beyond when it comes to accuracy you will be okay all right so <laughs> that's pretty much what i can say about that is it nerve-wracking yes are there times when people don't do so well under pressure and maybe that's what caused them to maybe lose a job or something like that? Um, because I've, I've heard people complain about that, that they've lost their job because, you know, it was the auditor's fault or whatever. You should be able to advocate for yourself and, and know how to stand up and say that this is how I got to that code. Um, that way you can, you know, advocate for a higher accuracy level for yourself. Because like I said, sometimes they, they miss stuff too. And that's pretty much the ins and outs of it. it. It's just part of being a medical coder. This is why I always say study, study, study. And do everything that you can to learn more. And work with your providers to streamline their documentation Make sure that they're documenting everything so that way you can capture everything. And as time goes on, you will get quicker with being able to catch things. And you will get sharper on picking up the little things, okay? All of these things just take time. But don't start thinking about it right out of the gate, the very first thing when you get in there, because it's just gonna it's just gonna mess you up. That is my advice as a veteran medical coder, that if you if you start snowballing into that I'm messing up I'm messing up then that's what's going to happen right it's like self-fulfilling prophecy you know you have to give yourself credit for the things that you know you have to give yourself credit for the fact that you passed your credential exam and now you have a job you know um but yeah I mean I I mean it's hard to say because of course I don't know every facility um but be be honest with your supervisor or whatever. Uh, if you don't feel confident, it's okay. Just say, I'm trying. I'm looking at all of these things. Just tell them how you are trying, okay? Um, don't give lip service, okay? Don't just say, well, I'm trying, then you're actually not trying, okay? Because I've seen people do that too um, because they just don't want to apply themselves. But they don't want to lose their job, you know? And so they just sort of give a lot of lip service. Uh, and I think that a lot of times that, that won't get you very far. But if you are trying, you know, a, a, a good lead, a good supervisor, a good data quality person will be able to spot that. I can, I can spot it about a mile away. And I can see it in even students. I can see it. Even people who don't have their credential yet, I can see. If that person is going to be detailed, if that person is going to be trying if that person is going to feel like they're going to be able to get away with something you can tell you know and if i can tell this i know there's other people that can tell this okay so you'll always have that you you should have somebody at least there to advocate for you uh hopefully it's your supervisor <laughs> and hopefully your supervisor will will help you out or you know your data quality person will be able to help you out if you're not understanding something, but don't get, don't get hung up on the accuracy, whatever you do. Uh, because if you start doing that, then it'll mess with your head and then it'll affect your production too, which that'll be another episode because <laughs> I got to, uh, close this one out. <laughs> I just get going on these sometimes. So, but hopefully I've put this to this fear to bed a little bit. Um, that it is just a, a fact of life when it comes to medical coding, audits, things like that. Just a fact of life and always trying to be sharp to catch those little things.
you know. But once you start, it'll be like second nature, being able to, to pick these things up. At least that's my opinion on it, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one up because I still have to film Quiz Friday. <laughs> but I, as I was telling the viewer, I don't feel right when I only film Quiz Friday on Fridays. I always feel like I'm missing something when I don't get to talk to you guys. So <laughs> I thought this would be a good episode to shoot anyway. So, all right. Uh, I will be filming this weekend because uh, it is almost the end of the year. <gasps> And um, I have a few things that I, I, I need to shoot this weekend as well uh, because because the 31st I'm going to be cooking for my um, church's New Year's party. So I'm doing all the catering for it. I went to the store today and got all the stuff. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm making beef burgundy. Beef burgundy and egg noodles. So it's a choice of egg noodles or um, mashed potatoes. And I think I'm going to make a pan of ranch mashed potatoes. Because I saw that recipe and I really want to try it. So. <laughs> and then I have the um, green beans. Um, and I'm going to make them KFC style. And then a uh, salad. Oh, and these garlic... Um, garlic knots. <laughs> oh my gosh, they smell so... I can't wait. I can't wait. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up before I start talking about food. <laughs> All right, but if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. Okay, I will see y'all in a little while. Bye.